So you want to make up a calcium hydroxide solution that has a pH of 11.4. It wants to know uh, what the concentration of the solution is. And if you wanted to make a 500 milliliter solution, what mass of calcium hydroxide would you have to put in to make that happen? So if calcium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide is a base, right? It's got that OH in there. And it gave me the pH. What I'm going to do is just do 14 minus that number to get my pOH. It's usually just handier. It's easier to work with OHs for bases and pHs for acids. So if they give you the other one than what you need, just kind of just subtract it from 14. Um, it'll be a little more convenient that way. So we know the pOH is 2.6. What's that? What? I can't hear you. The fans are loud. The, that's the pOH, right? The pH is 11.4. Okay. All right. So... If we know our pOH, we could find our OH minus using that, right? That's the power of my hydroxide. So if I do 1 times 10 to the negative 2.6, that's the molarity of my OH minus. Right? That's what that would give me. That's the power of my OH. So when you type that guy in, you should get a number like this. Let's see, 0 0.002512. That's the molarity of the ion. The problem was asking for what's the concentration or the molarity of the whole solution, not just of the OH piece, but of the whole calcium hydroxide. Well, Let's, it's kind of like what we were doing before, just in reverse. You know that it's 0 0.00251 moles of OH per liter. If you want the molarity of the calcium hydroxide, not the molarity of the OH, there's two OHs inside every calcium hydroxide. So there's two moles of OH for every one mole of calcium hydroxide. So our calcium hydroxide concentration is going to be half of what the ion concentration is. So like this. That's the molarity of our calcium hydroxide. So you get the first question answered. That's the concentration of the whole solution, the whole calcium hydroxide. Got it. Okay, what about the second part? If you wanted to make 500 milliliters of that solution, how many grams of calcium hydroxide would you have to measure out on the balance? Now it's kind of like a stoic problem because you know you want to make 500 milliliters and you know the molarity of it. So... Let's do our little factor label problem here. We want to make 500 milliliters of that calcium hydroxide. You've seen enough factor label problems, titration problems, to know we're going to get those milliliters into liters. We could get our liters into moles using the molarity of the calcium hydroxide that we just found out one second ago, right? one liter of that calcium hydroxide has 0 0.001256 moles of that calcium hydroxide in it. And then we're really close. We're at moles of calcium hydroxide. It wants grams of calcium hydroxide. So we just need the molar mass of that calcium hydroxide to switch it from moles to grams. So if you add up a calcium, two oxygens, two hydrogens, 74.1 and 
and then it's just a little bit of number crunching. 0 0.0465 grams of calcium hydroxide. That's what we'd have to put in to 500 milliliters if you wanted the pH to be 11.4. That is the peak level of difficulty of these problems here. You, because wow, there's a lot of steps, right? There's a lot to keep track of. Like, okay, I got the pH and I had to switch it to pOH, and then I had to take the pOH and switch it to OH, and then OH into calcium hydroxide, and then calcium hydroxide into grams. Right? A lot happening. So if you could follow me through all of that 14, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. You have to course practice it a little bit yourself because there's a lot happening there, but that's where all those steps came from. Okay, last one. And this last one isn't as bad as the previous one. This one's a little bit easier because it's an acid and they gave us the pH. The last one was a base and they gave us the pH. So a little more work because it gave us the H and we had to find the OH. This one is acid with H and they gave us the pH, a little less. So if it has a pH of 2.7, we could use that, that's the power of our hydrogen. So if I do 1 times 10 to the negative 2.7, that's going to give me my H plus, right? So we could type in our calculators and find the 1 times 10 to the negative 2.7 is 0 .001995. That's the molarity of the H plus. This guy wanted the molarity of the whole solution, the whole sulfuric acid solution. So that 0 0.001995 moles of H plus per liter. We want to get away from H plus and get to the whole sulfuric acid. Well, one moles worth of sulfuric acid would have two moles worth of H plus ions, right? So the molarity of our whole molecule is going to be half that of the ion. So 0 0.000. 0. Oops, sorry, that one went crazy. That left zero there. There we go.